Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Today, me, Zed Al Salim, Colin Qatar, and Nicholas Kitchen, we're going to be talking about housing recovery across three metropolitan areas uh, following major storm events. We're going to be making an analysis of federal funding allocation and recovery pathways. Uh, this study was aimed at analyzing federal disaster recovery funding. We compared federal disaster recovery funding allocations for homeowners across three cities uh, that were severely impacted by storms that hit the United States in the past 20 years. It is looking at Hurricane Katrina, Superstorm Sandy, and Hurricane Harvey. Uh, the uh, comparison of disaster recovery in these three cities allowed us to look at geographic, demographic, and temporal differences in federal funding allocation and policy. Uh, state and local level data for federally funded rebuilds, buyouts, and acquisition were analyzed to identify the total number of properties and funding allocation for each of these activities at the county scale across uh, three metro areas. Our aim was to assess uh, trends in recovery activity and spending with regard to our key research questions which are investigate how the disbursement of federal funds compared with the total impacted population and assist damages to identify and any disparities in the allocation uh, of and access to recovery resources. Reveal whether there was a clear and consistent logic to the selection between uh, rebuild, buyout and acquisition activities in the aftermath of uh, natural disasters. We will define these three recovery pathways a little bit later. Uh, explore the relationship between uh, federal funding allocation with demographic and socioeconomic information to identify any possible administrative bias in funding allocations. Uh, explore the relationship between recovery pathways and demographic and socioeconomic information to identify any possible administrative bias, uh, bias in the decision of uh, making in how these activities are implemented, as well as any observable community preferences for each of these activities. We move on to the definitions or sources we used. This slide shows us uh, some important definition senses, uh, since a number of uh, acronyms are used throughout this presentation. Uh, the two sources of federal funding for housing recovery are FEMA and HUD. FEMA is the Federal uh, Emergency Management Agency. We analyze data from two FEMA funding program for housing recovery. Individuals and Households Program, IHP. The IHP provides direct assistance to individuals and households immediately following a disaster. A hazard Mitigation Grant Program, the HMGP, it provides funding for uh, purchases of repeated flood loss for properties or other property actions, uh, such as uh, elevation of a home to minimize future risk to people and property. HUD is the Department of Housing and Urban Development. HUD makes community development block grant for disaster recovery available following disasters. Uh, usually in response uh, to any unmet needs from FEMA IHP funding. HUD CDBGDR funds are channeled through state and local governments who are required to draft action plans on how the funds will be allocated. Action plans are required to follow HUD's guidelines and will always include allocations for housing recovery within the housing recovery allocation, uh, within the housing recovery allocation. The design of programs is largely left up to state and local governments as long as they meet HUD's uh, general guidelines. So uh, I'll just take you through quickly um, our overall uh, pathway for our methodology. Um, so firstly, we uh, identified our housing recovery uh, funding categories, um, which were rebuild, buyout, and acquisition. Um, again, we'll define these in a little more detail um, in a later slide. Um, we identified um, uh, certain socioeconomic characteristics and demographics that we wanted to look at. Um, some examples would be um, percentage of the population that's over 65, median household incomes. Um, we identified our data sources for these two. Um, so social factors were primarily uh, taken from uh, the Census Bureau 
and uh, for housing recovery, uh, we used FEMA open data and had to rely on uh, various state and uh, local sources for the HUD uh, CDBGDR data. Um, from this, we were able to um, uh, identify 19 uh, specific social variables that we uh, used in our analysis and created um, 37 uh, unique federal assistance variables, um, uh, manipulating the, the federal data um, to, to um, assess um, trends in, in multiple uh, different ways. Um, continuing, uh, so for an, our analysis, we use sets of thematic maps and summary statistics to assess overall trends. Um, in order to an analyze the relationships between our federal assistance and social variables, we employ the Pearson correlation coefficient analysis. Um, this is a measure of the ratio of covariance between each of our variables. We noted that 14 of 37 total federal assistance variables and 19 of and nine of 19 total social variables were found to have uh, statistically significant correlations. Um, we will be discussing these throughout uh, the presentation as well. Um, in order to determine the significant differences um, that exist in the distribution of federal funding for disaster relief in the three regions. We use single factor analysis variance or ANOVA. Uh, the ANOVA measures the variation of the averages of the variables for each metro area. Uh, the ANOVA analysis allowed us to take the averages of each metro area for the 21 of our federal assistance variables and measure the total variation between each metro area as well as within each metro area. Uh, so now I'll take uh, take everyone through our um, housing recovery pathways, which were uh, rebuild buyout and acquisition. Um, so uh, from a government uh, policy and planning perspective, um, so following a disaster, um, state and local governments essentially have two options in how to allocate uh, funding. Um, uh, on the one hand, they can choose to disperse funds for rebuilding uh, and recovery, which is shown on the left hand side. Uh, the funds allow homeowners to remain in place and rebuild neighborhoods. Um, and there are um, these two funding categories, uh, which is HUD CDBGDR and FEMA um, Hazard Mitigation um, uh, Grant Program, uh, which can be um, used for, for rebuilding. Um, state and local uh, governments may also opt for a uh, mitigation strategy. Um, the buyout pathway, which is shown on the right-hand side, um, is aimed at removing at-risk properties and homeowners from the floodplain to reduce future uh, recovery costs and limit uh, um, immediate risk to health and safety. Um, buyouts are conducted with um, FEMA um, HMGP or CDBGDR funds, uh, which are channeled through state and local um, buyout programs. Um, and lastly, um, uh, state and local governments may um, choose acquisition for redevelopment. Um, for some storm damaged properties, um, acquisitions are shown in the middle. Um, and these properties are also directly purchased through federal, state, and local programs um, with the purpose of resilient uh, redevelopment. Um, so a key difference between these three pathways is the end use of the property, which is shown at the bottom. Uh, so rebuild properties remain housing. Um, in some cases, maybe made uh, uh, storm resilient. Um, acquisition properties are typically redeveloped as new flood resilient housing. And lastly, buyout uh, properties are cleared of any structures and returned to nature as open space. Um, we also uh, note that um, each of these funding uh, sources and pathways are, are to play, uh, you know, applied simultaneously um, and state and local governments will choose some, some um, uh, combination of these. Um, next, um, we just felt it was important important to show uh, how these pathways look to a homeowner um, whose home was uh, damaged through a storm. Um, so uh, for a homeowner, the, the choices are simplified down to stay or leave. Uh, in the stay category, which is on, on the left, uh, we can see the different funding options that are available uh, for rebuilding and repair. Um, if a homeowner chooses to leave, uh, the buyout uh, and acquisition categories are essentially the same, although buyouts are uh, made for pre-storm value of the home, while acquisitions are typically for post-storm fair market value. Um, however, there are usually um, uh, additional financial incentives for resettlement uh, in either case. 
Um, so, um, and ultimately the end use of the property uh, is not up to the homeowner following uh, sale. So here we can see uh, the three metro areas and 22 counties that was used in our analysis. And this slide shows some of the summary data for funding totals and percentages for each of the three recovery pathways in each metro area. Uh, we can see from the left-hand graph that uh, New Orleans clearly uh, had the most federal funding of the three. Uh, the top right graph shows funding allocation based on recovery pathways. In the bottom right graph, we can see the variation percentages of buyouts and acquisition categories across all three metro areas. Uh, note the scale is uh, only showing from uh, 95 to 100 percent, and that is because in all three metro areas, rebuilds and uh, rebuilds made up to 98 to 99% of the total housing recovery activities. So Hurricane Katrina. Uh, Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans on uh, August 29, 20, 2005. Uh, it had uh, 1.2 million people evacuated the metro area. More than 400 people, uh, 400,000 housing units were, were destroyed or damaged more than $7 billion of funds that went for rebuilds, and more than $1 billion of funds have been uh, went to for land buyouts and land acquisition. So the table on top shows the total number of applicants for each program, and the table at the bottom shows the distribution of the federal funds. It is important to note that the most of, uh, that most of the funds allocated for rebuilds were given to Jefferson and Orleans Parish, who has uh, who had the highest reported uh, cases for rebuilds. As for uh, the funds that allocated for buyouts and land acquisitions, uh, Orleans and Saint Bernard, Bernard Parish received the highest funds, hence they had the highest reported cases. Uh, <clears throat> For uh, the correlation results, uh, households, uh, the results of the correlation suggest that in New Orleans, parishes with higher percentages of households that uh, who are homeowners had a higher median income of uh, households have received fewer funds than parishes that had higher measures of income inequality and higher percentage of families in deep uh, poverty. The results also suggest that parishes with a higher percentage of households with income greater than 120K who received FEMA housing assistance mostly participated in the land acquisition program, while parishes with a higher share of population that is foreign born mostly participated in the rebuilding program. So to conclude, the allocation of federal assistance uh, funding in New Orleans metro region following uh, Hurricane Katrina did not exhibit any systematic bias as shown by the lack of a significant correlation between the federal assistance variables and social factors. Um, okay, so I'll just note here also that we are using uh, the county names for the New York boroughs. So uh, Richmond is Staten Island, uh, New York, Manhattan, uh, Kings, Brooklyn. Um, so uh, Hurricane Sandy um, struck New York uh, on October 29th, uh, 2012. Uh, we can see from the summary data uh, that Queens was the most impacted county by uh, total population and federal funding. Uh, but we also note that Richmond County received the second highest uh, funding due to its large numbers of uh, buyouts and acquisitions. Um, so uh, to summarize the correlation analysis within uh, New York City, um, so uh, the five boroughs uh, that showed, um, so uh, across the five boroughs um, uh, showed that high rates of income inequality, uh, uh, boroughs with higher rates of uh, income inequality received uh, less assistance. Um, the analysis uh, also showed that uh, counties with greater um, share of low income FEMA assisted households uh, received less uh, federal housing assistance on average. Um, in New York, uh, overall, there was no observable administrative or community preference uh, in terms of the distribution of buyouts um, uh, and acquisitions. Um, okay. 
So Hurricane Harvey made landfall in Houston, Texas on August 25th, 2017 as a category four hurricane. Um, in the aftermath, the total damages were estimated to be 125 billion. Uh, the Houston metro area was directly impacted by flooding, storm surge, and high winds. Um, and Harvey um, produced one of the largest rainfall and flooding events in US history. In the aftermath of the storm, there was damage to over 200,000 homes and almost 800,000 people uh, directly registered to FEMA for assistance. Um, the assistance from FEMA was very quick, but funding from the HUD programs um, that has been allocated, but spending from those programs even to today has been very slow. The impact zone for the storm was very large. Um, so for this project, we only focused on the nine core counties of the metro area. Um, so for the correlational analysis, there was no observ observable administrative bias uh, in the community preference for distribution of funding between buyouts, rebuilds, and acquisitions. However, there's a far greater number of rebuilds than uh, buyouts and acquisitions. Uh, there's a moderate to strong correlation between home ownership and income inequality in the Houston metro area to multiple um, federal assistance variables. And additionally, there's a correlation between uh, the percentage of people of color in the counties and the foreign born residents in the counties to some of the federal assistance variables. Um, so we created uh, sets of thematic maps uh, using color gradients uh, with darker shades uh, representing greater values. Uh, we also included the 100 year floodplain um, uh, shown here overlaid in uh, light blue and uh, high risk um, coastal uh, zones um, known as V zones uh, just for uh, context. Um, so the map on, on the left here is showing uh, average FEMA estimated damages per household for each county while the middle map uh, is showing total federal funding allocated to each county. Um, so we can see the funding totals generally align with counties that had the highest um, average damages. Uh, we, do, um, we note though the uh, disparity between four Houston counties. Um, when we look uh, at the map on the far right, um, we can see that, uh, which is showing uh, median household uh, incomes. Um, those counties uh, had some of the highest median household uh, incomes. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll discuss this observation a little more uh, in our um, overall uh, uh, correlation analysis across the 22 counties. Um, next um, here is um, uh, a map on the left is showing um, average uh, FEMA housing uh, direct assistance to homeowners, uh, funds per household um, as a ratio based on um, the highest, um, highest and lowest income categories. So the lowest being uh, uh, under 30,000 and the highest being uh, above 120,000. Um, in all uh, three metro areas, the average uh, FEMA housing assistance funding per household was greater for the lowest income households. Uh, the map on the right is showing uh, each county's total buyouts as a, uh, per, as a percent of the metro area's total buyouts. Um, the map um, shows us that buyouts in the metro, uh, Houston metro area and New York City uh, were, all, were primarily concentrated in two counties, um, these being Harris and Richmond counties. Um, by contrast, uh, New Orleans uh, metro area, the buyouts were um, relatively spread out across the eight counties. Um, and uh, this map in indicates um, the influence of uh, local pressures and initiatives um, from public, uh, from the public and government agencies uh, regarding um, uh, buyout activities. Uh, so for our aggregated correlations, this is the correlation between all three metro areas. Um, we note that only eight of 19 total social variables and eight of total 37 uh, federal assistance variables showed any statistically significant correlation. Um, the re results of the analysis suggest that counties with higher poverty rates and lower median household incomes saw more federal assistance per household. Uh, counties with higher percentage of people of color and um, higher percentages of uh, foreign born residents received a greater share of each metro's total rebuilding funding. Um, the percent of foreign born appears to correlate to counties within urban centers. There was no observed FEMA, um, there was no observed bias in FEMA estimated damages per household, or um, there were no correlations aside from 
the variable foreign born between social variables, rebuilds, buyouts, and acquisitions. At the county scale, we found no single social factor to be a solid indicator of government um, implementation or public, or public preference for a recovery option. Um, at the household level, to mitigate some of the limitations of performing our analysis, at the county scale, we performed a secondary analysis at the zip code scale using only the FEMA uh, ISP housing assistance data and five selected social variables. Uh, the housing assistance variable across all three metro areas at the zip code level was fairly distributed inconsistently in relation to the social factors. The strongest correlation were observed in New Orleans. However, the New Orleans housing assistance um, program was greater for households in zip codes with higher poverty rates and people of color and lower medium, median household incomes. The opposite trends were seen in Houston and New York City, um, but with a much weaker correlation. Um, for the ANOVA analysis, uh, we observed only significant um, variation in 10 of the 21 federal assistance variables um, selected for the ANOVA analysis. Um, the table shows the 10 variables and the metro area averages for each, as well as the p-values for statistical significance. Um, the percent property value variable is the percent of the total median area household value that was covered through federal assistance. This variable allows us to account for some of the variation in property values across the 22 counties in the three metro areas. To assess in better detail where funding allocations per household were greatest, significant variations were observed in the percent property value variable across all three metro areas. Um, so our key takeaways for, from the ANOVA analysis was variations in soci socioeconomic characteristics for each metro area likely accounted for most of the variation seen. But variation in the percent property value may show that more funding was made available at the household level in some areas more than others. All three metro areas followed similar patterns for rebuilds, buyouts, and acquisitions um, for the three pathways. The FEMA housing assistance funding was, distribu was distributed relatively consistently in all three metro areas. Okay, so I know we're short on time here, so I'll just try to summarize uh, as best I can the key findings overall. Um, so uh, overall, there was no uh, significant disparities in funding. Um, uh, there was no uh, disparities in term, on, on the county scale. Um, we did not identify any counties or counties that showed uh, act, less act, access to housing recovery funds uh, relative to FEMA's estimated damages. Um, as far as um, the variations, um, that we observed in uh, uh, action plans and um, uh, program designs. Um, we note that the, the buyout and acquisition uh, uh, activities are likely to uh, be more a reflection of local government and community needs rather than any larger uh, regional designs for resiliency. Um, in terms of the FEMA housing assistance funding, um, that was uh, appears to have been distributed uh, uh, to households proportionate to economic need overall. Um, and in terms of social factors, um, so the variation in the uh, percent property value covered through FEMA assistance um, uh, across all three metro areas is likely due to uh, recovery funds uh, being distributed to households, again, uh, proportionate to economic need. Uh, and there was no significant uh, correlation between any social variables um, uh, and our recovery pathways of rebuilds, buyouts, and acquisitions. Um, so there's no observable uh, administrative or public preference for um, any, uh, any uh, one of these activities. All right. Um, to summarize uh, and wrap up, um, so we encountered some difficulties um, and limitations in our project. Uh, first and foremost, we encountered some difficulty in getting FUD, um, HUD uh, funding data. Um, for our analysis. Um, the final data that we did get came from a combination of multiple state and local um, sources. Um, and we had to work at the county scale for this due to limitations in how the HUD program is actually administered. Um, secondly, we do not know the exact locations or even neighborhoods for the buyouts and acquisitions, which um, we hypothesize in some 
counties may have been clustered in certain areas or certain neighborhoods. Um, next, uh, for buyouts and acquisitions, the funding does not uh, reflect the true cost as these property transfers also include administrative costs, uh, maintenance costs, and deposition costs. Um, many of the buyouts and acquisitions also come with re resettlement incentives, uh, which were not included in this study. Last but not least, um, population density was not used as a social variable, um, but it's likely um, an important factor in counties with urban centers. As from our analysis, it showed that these areas had the greatest activities. Um, lastly, we hope that with our study design and methods, we can it can serve as a template for future analysis of uh, disaster um, recovery funding at a finer geographic scale. So that's it for us. Um, we'd like to thank Professor Biles for all of his assistance and his leadership. And I'd also like to thank my um, two group members for all their dedication and hard work. Thank you.